Good morning, friends. This is Mass for Tuesday, March 24th. As we have been doing most days, we have been starting with a prayer to remind us of the spiritual communion we're sharing, even if we can't be together physically. This prayer was suggested by Nancy Wren. It is the prayer that we put with all the prayer blankets that we send out to those who are sick from this parish. It's called The Healing Power of the Holy Name by Michael Buckley. Jesus, your coming on earth was like a new dawn over a world of darkness. The blind saw, the lame walked again, the sick were healed, and even the dead were raised to life. Come again into the lives of everyone and heal the wounds of their broken hearts. Come again to all who are sick or depressed and fill their lives with hope and peace. Come again to us as we call on your holy name so that we too may receive your help and healing grace. Amen. Amen. Today's Mass is being offered for Barbara Wheat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, it's good to be with you again. We have splurged on a brand new sound system, a whole $22 for this uh, next few days until we start getting pieces of a, a better sound system. Let us know, um, maybe by sending us a, a private message, if this is making a difference, and let us pray that I not knock over the chalice or the candle as I'm tethered to the camera through this microphone wire. Today, we are truly into the second half of Lent. From here on out, with a couple of exceptions, we will be hearing from the Gospel of John. And today, I'd like, since we're doing this on a recording, to do something a little different at home if you're watching this later, we're going to try something called simple contemplation, where I'm going to invite you to hear our gospel passage three times. I'll step aside from the, the podium for a moment to indicate the, the verses that I'd like you to think about, maybe replaying three times and thinking about it in different ways. I'll give more instructions when we get to the gospel, if I remember. Let us begin though by recognizing that we are in need of healing and so we ask for god's mercy i confess, I confess to almighty god and to you my, my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what i have done and what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have Lord. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
He led me outside by the north gate and around the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and made me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more he made me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arapa, and empties into the sea. Where the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, a holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come. Behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. second time to imagine that you are the man who is paralyzed. What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you experience? And the third time, 
as Jesus? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you experience? There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called, in Hebrew, Bethesda, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled people. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately, the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did this on his Sabbath. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. There's a tradition in, in that the Jews had at the time of Jesus that the pools of Bethesda were a place where occasionally the water started to bubble up. And the belief was that it was an angel stirring the waters. And the first person to get down into the pool after the, water, the bubbles started to come up would be healed of any illness. So this pool that's by the sheep gate where all the sheep were brought in very close to the temple to be sacrificed was kind of a place of chaos I would imagine you have all these sheep and the people who were dealing with the sheep coming in and then you have all these ill and crippled and lame people who are lying around probably begging for alms and it's, it's a scene of pandemonium and yet it's right there near the temple When Jesus asks this man, do you want to be made well, the man does not give him an answer. He says, I can't get down there. And when Jesus heals him, and he goes, well, you know, how did they, why are you carrying the mat? He's like, well, somebody else told me. To. Well, who is it? I don't know. This seems like a man who, for good or for ill or whatever reasons, is not somebody who was used to taking responsibility in his life. I think if I had been crippled and at this pool for 38 years, I would have found a way to get somebody to put me on the ledge, and I would just lay there until the next time the water's bubbled up so I could just roll right in. We are in this unprecedented time. But I think there's a lot of things in our lives that it, many times we've said, well, someday. Someday I'm going to get more organized. Someday I'm going to stop working so hard and I'm going to really make time for the things that matter. I'm going to do more for my family. I'm going to, I never have time to reach out and call my friends. I'm going to do that someday. Well, I know some of us are stressed to the max and we're trying to do a lot of work, but I also know that some of us have more time on our hands and more time at home. Do you want to make your life better? Lent 
is not a season that has been co-opted by the secular world. Advent has really been taken over by commercial interests. Advent has become a time for going to Christmas parties and singing Christmas carols. Lent doesn't have quite that commercial pizzazz. Lent, though, is not supposed to be the same as a secular get better, start exercising kind of thing. Lent is a season of recognizing that we need God. We need God in a deeper way than we've realized before. So in this time, when things are so different, is this a time to perhaps really have Lent? To be on retreat with God in a special way? 34 days ago, I was at the pools of Bethesda with a bunch of pilgrims, including a number of people from St. Austin. And the very first thing we did, this was our, our very first stop at a historic site over in Jerusalem. And Julie and Terry Lyons had brought along a big container filled with buttons. And when we went to the pools of Bethesda, we did a healing service, and we anointed a number of the pilgrims who were struggling with illness, but then we also blessed these buttons. And these buttons are now being sewn onto our prayer blankets that we have people in our parish make and give to those who are sick. And then, after that service and after Mass at St. Anne's, we went to the Western Wall, to the place where the temple was. And every time I go to the Holy Land, I learn a little bit more. The temple of the Jewish people was built over Mount Moriah. That the Holy of Holies of the temple was built exactly on top of the place where we believe that Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice Isaac. A sacrifice, a moment of time that was revered by Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike, an event that is considered very sacred to about half the people who live on the earth, more than three billion people. And I learned this time that there is a belief that when the Messiah comes again, that rock on Mount Moriah will break open and water will come forth. And Jerusalem itself is a city that gets a fair amount of water, but just two miles east of Jerusalem is the desert. And this water will flow down from the east side of the temple, and the belief is that it will flow down the Kidron Valley for the 20 miles to where it will join the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has not had life in it for thousands, maybe even millions of years. But this water from the temple will be so life-giving, so abundant, that life will again flourish there. As foretold in our first reading from Ezekiel. When will we experience God's glory? What are we waiting for? Do we want to be made well? We stand and offer our prayers for the church and its leaders that in this time, we may be voices of hope and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, those suffering in body, mind, and spirit, all of those we know who are ill, including those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that they and their caregivers may experience the healing presence of Christ we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the protection of all life, from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those involved in the healing professions, for doctors and nurses and all their assistants, that they may truly see themselves as agents of God, as healing powers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us here in Austin and around the country who are reeling as new regulations are coming forward, restricting our movements, that we may accept these things with an idea that we are protecting one another and that we may thrive, not just survive, in this time of limited movement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the people involved with St. Austin Catholic School as today begins the pickup of materials for home schooling and instruction, distance instruction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our political leaders at the local, state, national, and international level, that they may truly be inspired by the Holy Spirit and care for the poorest among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, that they may see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those most in need, those who are suffering from homelessness, hunger, addiction, abuse, depression, anxiety, those who are living in violent parts of the world, those who are victims of sexual trafficking, that we may not forget them in this time of our own concerns, that we may be the hands and feet of Christ, caring for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, loving God, Every day right now is a new adventure. Help us to stay connected to you and connected to one another, even when we cannot see the people we know and love so well. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. They will become for us the bread of life and our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and concrete heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, Lord is at Christ at your hands. Praise the Lord in his name. For our good and all the church. O Lord, we offer to you these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as Creator for this our mortal life and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. 
And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uceli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Osana in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Osana in Excelsis. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the Word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May your spirit make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may the spirit keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Joe our Bishop, with all the bishops and your entire people, including those who seek you with a sincere heart. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostles, with St. Paul, St. Austin, St. Mary of Magdalene, St. Phoebe, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, and at, at formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the church peace and unity in accordance with your will. We ask this, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, we told each protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. My soul shall be with you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. O oh Lord, purify our minds, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now, and likewise in times to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O merciful God, grant that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the love of God by loving and serving one another. And thanks be to God.